Alright, um, subcourse. Subcourse EN5156 Edition B, Carpentry 2. Um, Army Institute Professional Development, Army Correspondence Course Program. Carpentry 2, subcourse EN5156 Edition B, User in the United States Army Engineer Corps, Port Leonard, Wood, Missouri, 65473, 6 credit hours, Edition A, date September, November 1995. Table of contents, of course, overview, overview, lesson, floor construction, part A, floor framing, B, subflooring, C, finishing floor, practice exercise, answer key, key free feedback, lesson two, wall system, straightway construction, framing members, wall sheeting, molding, stairs, exercise, and practice exercise, answer key feedback, lesson three, roof construction, roof type, framing members, roof covering, material, practice exercise, answer key feedback, appendix A, list of Ackermans, appendix B, recommended reading list. Lesson 1, Floor Construction, Critical Task 05123611141. Introduction. After the founding, uh, foundation is, place, is in place, are you ready to start the construction of the frame with the floor system? Part A, Floor Framing. The type of sills sills are a horizontal member of the, of the building, which either rests upon masonry foundations or absent such of the form of the foundation. The sill is foundation that supports all the building above it. Its first part of the building is set and in place rests directly on the foundation post or ground. Since uh, sills are joined by the corners and slides when necessary, the type of sills is dependent on the type of the structure used in the frame. Box sills, figure 1-1, one, one, page 1-2, one, show this box sill. Box sills are often used with the common style platform, either with or without still planning with the type of the over the part of the lines of the foundation wall ground is called the sill, sill plate. The sill is laid egg, edgewise on the outside edge of the sill plate. All right, figure eight, um, fi or, sorry, figure eleven, uh, one, figure one, one, box sills, two by four studs, um, the sole plate underneath the two by four studs, then the sub flooring on top of the sill. And the sill on under the sill underneath the sill is a sill plate with a fresh and mo fresh mortar. Um, otherwise, you see the studs with the sole plate, then the joint uh, across the joints with the sill plate on the sill plate on concrete foundation. Your T studs. There, are there are two types of T sills: construction sill with the commonly used with the dry and warm climates. So figure one, two with the sills used with the colder climates. Figure one, three. Although the T sill construction are similar. Notice to figure one, two, the joints are joined, nailed to the studs and sole plates. Figure one, three, the joints are nailed to the studs and sill plate and sills headers and are used between the um, joists. Figure one, two, show the drier climate. Till T sills, the sill plate, the, con the construction foundation, the sill plate, the sole plate. On top of the with the suds on top of the sole plate with a, a draft stop header and joist. One three uh, um, figure one three cold climate T still um, foundation wall fresh mortar. Um, your uh, two by two two by six sills and then a uh, header. Your um, subfloor and your two by four flooring um, studs and joists. Built up of the sills, the joints are staggered with the built and sills used up. Notice the figure one four, however, the built are still and the corner joints are made with the heavier sill with the use of the post, but the used and foundation sills are um, singly heavy timbers built up of the two or more pieces of the timber. Where the heavy timbers are used, the joints should be placed over the post. Figure one six one four. Figure one four, built up sills show the post sills and staggered joints. Um, 1-5 is a brace framing sill with the footing in the foot post on top of the, and then the sill on top of the post. Figure 1-6, the heavy timber, a post and sill. 1-2, type of the girders. Girders are the large horizontal member of the U for the support of the joist and beam, but the, the girder is made of several beams that nailed together with a 16-D, um, 16 penny nails, common penny nails, um, solid wood, steel, reinforced concrete combination of the materials. Girders carry a very large portion of the weight of the building. They must be well designed, rigid, properly supported on the, the, the foundation of the wall that on the columns. Girders must install with the support and the joist properly. The ends of the wood girders should be at least four inches on the post of the built up, the built up girder. The built up girder is commonly used for the house construction generally made of three boards nailed together of 16 D common net 16 penny weight um, common nails for the show of the built up girder walls and joists and columns a show of the two outside masonry walls B show of the um, built up girder um, C show of the floor joists and D show of the column with the support with the girder so you have D is show of the column and the support with the girder C A is your outside masonry walls B is your built up girder C is your floor jo joists
and then over here show the detail of the built-up girder, um, how it was staggered. Girder with ledge buried, you put the girder with ledge board with vertical space limited to where the headroom is needed. Figure 1-8, one 1-8 eight, one eight show the girder with the ledge board. No, it's like not additional. One half inch from the shrinkage for shrinkage and girder over the ledger board with the joist. Um, joint hangers, a girder with the joint joist hangers is used. With the, um, joist hangers, a joy, girder with the joist hang, hangers is used where the little headroom where their joints must carry the extremely heavy load. All right, um, the girder or the header with the joist um, hangers and they're in between the joists is hanging onto the girder, hanging onto the girder. Um, one three girder size requirement. A girder shall be large enough to support the load. The carpenter should understand the effect of the length of the width and depth of the wood girder, the principal width of the governing side of the girder, the distance between the girder per the girder, load area, the total floor of the load per square foot on the girder, load per liner foot on the girder, the total load of the girder, the material of the um, used depth. The depth of the girder is double the safe load, but they increase the four times for the example the girder is three inches wide, the twelve inches deep will carry four times as much weight as the girder with three inches weight and wide and six inches deep. To obtain the greater comparing capacity is better to increase the depth of the increase the width but then to increase the width of the girder. Decide the built up of the girders of various loads over the spans determine the table one. Table one shows your load per linear foot over the girder and uh, the spans from six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, nine and ten feet. Nominal size girder in inches. Um, load area. If the bo both foundation walls and the girder carry load of area of the building because of the end of the, each of the joists, joists rests on the girder, the more weight on the girder on either side of the wall. Example one before considering load on the girder, consider the weight of the single joist above the ten foot board weighs five pounds per foot and uh, when five pounds per foot is led by two men, if men are on the opposite side of the end of the plank, they will be supporting 25 pounds. See the figure 10. Um, two, pa two people, 50 pounds, um, 25 pounds a person. Example 110, example the weight of single joist. Example 2, now see, now assume that one of those men lifts the end of the 10 foot board with the same weight as the first one, the third one lifts of the opposite end, the two men on the opposite side, each of the supporting half of the weight on one plank, 25 pounds piece, but a man is support center is supporting one half each of the two boards at a total of 50 pounds, see figure 11. This is figure 11, example the weight on the girder with the two, in the middle, with the two boards, 55 five foot pounds at 100 pounds for the center weight. Two men on the outside representing the foundation wall center re re represent the girder with the girder's half the weight with the other half the e equally divided with the outside walls. However, the girder may not always be located halfway between the outer walls. Imagine the same three men lifting two blanks at the weight of five pounds per um, foot. One of the planks is eight feet long and the other is 12 foot long. The total length of the use of the two planks is a sample as before. The weight of per foot is, is the same. The total weight of the both cases is 100 foot. 100 pounds. One of the outside men is supporting half of the 8 foot plank with the 20 pound for the men opposite for the outside end is supporting half 12 foot, 12 foot plank with 30 pound for the men in the center supporting one half of each of the plank with a total of 50 pounds the same total weight of the lifting before. It's important to remember the girder share of the weight of the floor on each side of the, um, of the point over the which the joint will rest upon it. One six floor load. A girder or load area are known as the total floor loads per square foot must be determined the safety per purpose of the dead load and lives that must be considered. Dead load is a building structure weighting the carrying called dead load. The dead load per square foot floor of foot of floor is carried directly and indirectly girder with the varying portions. The dead load varies according to the method of construction and building height. Structural parts are include the dead bed uh, dead bad dead dead load are floor joists, floor level of the floor materials including attic floor. Barrel portions, attic portions, attic joists up from the top floor, the ceiling layeth plaster, including basement ceiling and the plaster. Total dead load, load total dead load for the building life frame, for life frame construction, some of the ordinary frame with the housing, the dead load allowance per square foot of the structural parts must be added together with determine the total dead load with the allowance for the average subfloor finished floor of joists without basement blown plaster should be ten pounds per square foot. The basement ceiling is plastered, additional ten pounds per square foot should be allowed. And if the attic is unfloored and unfloored, the load allowance is twenty pounds must be made with the ceiling plaster and joints as with the girders bearing portion and support with the first floor portion. If the attic is floored, the storage an additional 10 pounds per square foot should be allowed. 
See live loads. While weight of the furniture and Pronison's other movable loads are not actually part of the par, 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 par of the buildings, they still carry with the girder is called the live load. Live load per square foot will vary according to the use of the building. Local weather conditions show uh, snow on the roof is considered part of the live load. The allowance for the live load on the floor is used for the living purpose of light, usually three pounds per square foot. If the attic floor is used for the light storage, an additional twenty pounds per square foot should be allowed. Allowance per square foot should be for the live load is usually governed by local building specifications regulations. Load per linear foot. The total load per square foot of the floor is known as the load per linear foot of the girder. Easily figured, assume the girder area of the building shown figure 1-2 slice and one foot lengths across the girder. Each slice represents the weight supported by one foot of the girder. If the slice is divided into one floor units, each of the unit will represent one square foot of the total floor area. The load linear load per linear foot of the girder is determined by the multiplying the number of the point the units 12 for the total foot per square foot 70 pounds give the 840 pounds um, linear load on the foot of the girder with a 12 times 70 with 840 pounds down that you can take 840 pounds per, per, per load per linear foot of the girder use table one for the page one six and determine the girder size if your number is not and not down the table round up all right 112 of the girder per load per load linear foot on the bottom you have your floor with the girder load is spaced out with um um, by 14 and 10 foot with a 7 foot section 12 and a 5 foot section 12 foot in between the girder load um, and the center girder load 7 foot long um, floor with a double floor with a floor joist and plastered wall and ceiling con and ceiling jo joist um, to be the, the total floor load with the note with the figure 112 of the girder is off center with remember the half of the load is supported with the girder with the half is supported with the foundation walls therefore the joist length is supported one side of the girder 7 feet and the um, half of 14 feet other side of the 5 feet with the half of the 10 feet total distance 12 feet across the load of the bed area since each slice is in one foot wide and the total floor area of the 12 foot square foot assume that the total floor load with each of the square foot is 70 pounds Multiply the length and width by seven foot by twelve foot. To give the total square feet for support with the girder and seven feet by twelve foot eight foot eighty four square feet. All right, girder material. When girders are more common with steel girders in small frame buildings, small uh, solid timbers may be used with the girder may be um, built up by using two or more of the two inch planks and built up and then girder wraps at least less at least yeah, less easily than the solid wooden girders are likely to decay in the center. Choose a material regardless of whether the girder is built up solid, but it should be well seasoned material for the special for the specific total girder load of the span with the side of the girder with varying according with the kinds of woods and even the synth the woods are stronger than others. Alright, using nails. Um, when built up the girders are used with a piece with it should be secured with a nail tooth to prevent individual bucking. The two piece of the girder with the two inch lumber should be nailed on both sides with a sixteen common nail and the sixteen penny weight common nail. The nail should be located at the bottom space of approximately two feet apart with the near ends of the one foot apart with the center of the free so three space. Um, three piece girder should be nailed in the same way the nailing pattern should be square with across the end of the boards one and a half inches from the end and the additional every sixteen inches. 1 8 girder splices to make up the girder with each straight line lumber line and lumber free with the knots and other defects the stock should be long enough so no more than one joint will overcome the span between the floor for footings joint is beam it should be staggered and taking care of the square planks at each of the joint but with a tight figure half lap joint sometimes half lap joints as you with the joint solid um, beams and cave for this place the beam and then one inch annual ring from the run of the top of the bottom the lines of the half lap joints are um, then laid out and see figure 113 cuts are made along the lines of these check with the steel for square to ensure that the matching joint breathe these processes on the other beam. 113 shows girder space splices on the column, the half lap joint, the column, and the anchorage bolt. And then you have a butt joint. Um, notice the uh, cap. Temporary strap. The temporary strap across the joint with a tightly figured with the drill with the bat hole joint and bat with about one sixteenth inch of the bolt you with the fasten the joint with a bolt and the washer and nut. Um, strap joint when the strap joint um, butt joint is you with the joint the solid beam the end of the beam should be cut square with the straps are generally eighteen inches long or bolted on each side of the beam. One nine girder supports. The small house of the built with the architecture of the carpenter must know the principle to determine the proper side of the girder supports. Column was columns of vertical part members of the design of the carry the load, load dead loans placed on hunt with the call of the column or post. It can be made of metal with the metal of the masonry wooden columns may be solved with the timber several wooden members that may be nailed together with the sixteen to twenty common nails. Metal columns are made with a heavy pipe with a large steel angle to I beam the column place. 
Column is based on good arrangement of the gutter supporting column with the 24 foot the 40 foot building shown figure 114. The column B supports one and a half of the gutter load existing in the part of the building lying between the wall A and column C with the column C with the support half of the gutter load between column B and D. Likewise, column D the share of the gutter load is equal with the column C with the wall E. Well, figure 114 shows the gutter column spacing 10 foot from the between column B and column C and D and M. On a 40 foot length, um, wall A and B E on the girder, 24 foot, and it's center, centered in the middle. Alright, when, lo when locating columns which some poor girder to avoid the span with more than 10 feet between the columns, the farther apart of the columns space, the heavier the girder must appear and be to carry the joint joist over the span of the columns. Bearing plates and footings, regardless of the materials used with the column, they must have some of the forms of the bearing plate with the top of the bottom of the plates distributed the load evenly across the column. Basement post support grid should be also be set on the mo um, mo masonry footings. The columns should be securely fastened on the top load bearing member of the bottom of the footing on which they rest. Column fastening figure 115 shows the solid wooden column with a metal bearing cap the drill with the, uh, so that it is fastened to the columns of the girder. The bottom type of the column may be fastened to the masonry footing by a metal dowel. A dowel should be inserted with the hole of the drill with the bottom of the column of the masonry footing. The base is coated with an asphalt to the drilling point to prevent rust and rot. Metal cap um, shows the metal dowel and the metal masonry footing on the figure of 115 girder of the column fastening. 110 floor joists. Jo joists are wooden members that are usually two to three inches thick. They make up the body with the floor flame and the flooring and the subflooring is nailed together. Joist loads are usually joist loads can uniformly load materials personnel. They are loads of the weight of the joist floors. Dead load with the joists are spaced 16 to 24 inches. Center the sometimes spacing 12 inches. When spacing, uh, when made necessary for the load, heavier joists should be used with certain parts of the floor joists. If the flame to support heavy concentrated loads, portions will be the necessary double joists. Place two joists together. Figure 116. Our right, figure 116 shows reinforced joists. Um, the joists is um, shown by the block in between the joists. Um, the load bearing wall is on top of the joists. All right, joists and sills. When joists is, um, jo when joists to sills, be sure that the connection can be held and can hold the load of the joint. Will carry the on rest of the joint resting on the sill with the girder shown. Figure 117 connection with the method is known most commonly used to provide the strongest point with the possible. The message shown in Figure 118, page 114, will ledger to the place that you but the non desirable for the use of the joint on the top of the sill. The ledger point should be securely nailed with the sill girder of the joist. Maybe must be notched. If it should be securely nailed with the sill, the girder of the joist must be notched. It should be noted notched that. Over one third of the depth of the prevent splitting. Joists must be level with the frame of the girders. If the joists are the same height with the girder, the joists must be notched. All right, on um, figure 117, the joist results in resting on the notch of the girder and the sill, um, with the joist resting on top of the girder and the sill. Um, 118, the joist on ledger plates. The ledger plate, the joist is on top of the uh, ledger points with the sills on the side where the joist rests on, rest on the sill with the third of the girder, sill, the girder, joist, and girder ledger plate. Um, 119 joists connected at the girder. Um, show the joists and the girder and the ledger strips. Joist hangers. When desirable to have the joist girder flush any of the jo jo joints, be sure the joist hangers are support joisting hangers or girder uh, are at the girders. When the joints are hung with a joist hanger, the maximum headroom is obtained below the girder. Or this shows the joist hanger on, on the girder. Or bridging. When the joists are used with a long span, they tend to sway on the side of the side, therefore bridging itself. The floor flames are bridged with the sifting to prevent unequal deflection of the joints. Bridging enables the overload joints to receive some of the help on the joists on either side of the pattern of the bridging stock they obtain with the placing of the metal material between the joist marking and so on. Then three types of the bridging, solid cross and com solid cross and compression. Solid to provide maximum rigid joists to use the solid bridging. The bridge is offset with the permanent end of the nail. What possible? Show the um, joists, the solid bridging, and the sub plywood subfloor. Cross where the word um, where the word cross may be often the name of the cross fit the diagonal beach when the joint for each piece for the nail with the top of each of the joists above the subfloor of the over the joint bottoms. Um, free floating, free free um, left free until the subfloor is laid. The permanent the joists adjust themselves to the final position, keep the bridging. From pushing up the joists and causing the uneven floor. Figure 122 shows the cross bridging. With, you notice the joists are finished with the bridging over the cross and cross bridging. Compression using hammer blows to install the compression ring for the bridge is now drilled in the nail pieces. Step 1, step 2, and step 3, and step 4 shows the bridging installing the cross, cross bridging. Part 4, part B subflooring. 112 plywood subflooring at the foundation of the base, um, base framework of the floor is complete with the subtotal. 
Swept floor called in, so, in, so, can be installed in the material that constructs with the swept floor can be either one inch, two inch of the material applied with a satisfactory swept floor and becomes the larger sheets which can be installed with rapidly. Thickness required in one half to five eighths of an inch, three quarter inch, depending on the joist and spacing of the floor the requirements. Lay the sheet with a face crane with the right angle of the joist and solve the plywood. Lay the sheet with the joist or place over the joist. Angle the uh, arrange the plywood so the joist and complete floors or stagger and see figure one twenty four glue and nail the plywood in place. Figure one twenty four is plywood sub for for sub flooring, staggering the end end of the joints. 134, one, sorry, 113 diagonal subflooring. The diagonal subflooring of the joist of the framework nailed to plate piece for the figure 125 of the page, figure on page 118 subflooring may be either one inch or two inch material. Then lay the subfloor before the walls are framed square, the end of the boards of the nail before laying the subfloor on the flooring. Place the end of the boards before the nail and the laying of the floor. Use at least three, na three nails per joist for, for boards eight inches wide and wide or more. Or this shows that 125 shows the diagonal subflooring. As you can see, that the uh, subfloor is going diagonal, and the finished floor goes straight across to the, jo the joists on the um, girders and the, and, and the columns. And then 114 preparing to lay a floor. The finishing floor should deliver the job site sufficient time to allow the carpenter to lay out the floor. To allow the flooring to adjust the moisture and the temperature condition of the building. 15 pounds of the asphalt should be placed over the subfloor before installing the finished floor. Before laying the floor, check the floor plans to determine whether the rooms are largest with the relationship with the other rooms. If the laying of the strip of the floor, see if the flooring will extend to the largest room. The next room is the laying of the floor of the longest direction. Check the wall of the largest room to see if the opposite wall and parallel to each other. The snap the chalk line parallel along the long side. Longest wall to establish a straight line called the baseline. This line it should extend for the next room to the uh, stripping the floor will cont be continuous. 115 lay with the floor. The following guidelines should be used with the laying of the floor. Select the long straight piece of floor with the first board. Place the piece of the flooring in the position of the groove edge of the tour of the wall and from one figure 126 or pull approximately one quarter inch along the wall for expansion. Figure 126 of the floor plan, A, B, the baseline, going number to L, the Y, and C, um, room 1, 2, and 3. Face the nail with a board, A, finish with, the, um, with a nail, um, but do not try with the nail home. Um, measure the distance from the X from the face for the first board with the chalk line to the L. Transfer the distance of Y to the set the nail, um, B, now, now the board in parallel with the chalk line, L, with the longest wall, wall in the longest room. Um, use straight edge to ensure the board is straight within the face of the nail with the board every with 12 inches of the nail the closest wall as possible. 5. Or sorry, F. Continue, um, continue to cut and fit with the nail with the flooring with until the board with the mark 2 has been reached. G. Make sure the board joints are fixed, staggered. Figure C. Figure 127. Fit 120. Apply nail with the rest of the tongue groove flooring with the tongue with about at 50 degrees of the, of the floor. Withdraw the long tongue and the groove with the flooring and the nail and use the short piece of the tongue and the groove lumber to the straight edge with the hammer and drive with the flooring up tight with the figure 128 and page 120. Or figure 127 to show the staggered board joints as they are staggered and also the 128 show the binding of the floor, the groove, and the tongue and the joint and the nail. Then the stand on the board nail the Stand on the board nail will nail nail will nail on the floor in place with the holes to strip and the floor in place. Um, nailing in the plate for um, for in the place. Um, look for the baseline L with the figure 130 the finished door with the laid up laid up on the line with the star, star, starter board with the largest room should be laid with the front end of the board should be in the same distance for the chalk line. Um, front end of the board to ensure the boards will come out with every door opening floor passing room one to two room one two two. Um, Continue laying on the floor with the two three boards with the opposite wall. Now uh, L. Now cut the la last few boards once with the groove within uh, the, uh, the board. Then in position, draw the tightly figure to serve the nail and then in place. This page is intentionally left back. Lesson one: Exercise practice exercises. Lesson two: Practice reference. Um, lesson two: Wall system, stairway, and construction.